Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. The fallout continues from that video obtained by CNN showing Diddy assaulting his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. Experts say his apology released on Instagram yesterday after initially denying the incident may not help him avoid further legal trouble. Diddy's apology is being rejected not only by Cassie Ventura but by a lot of people on social media simply because he was initially so forceful in denying any such incident happened. Advocates for survivors of domestic violence also saying an apology is not enough to ensure accountability. We want to warn you the video is graphic and disturbing. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. Except that he didn't when the allegation was first made, ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura describing the attack in a lawsuit filed last year. How did he assaulted her at the now closed Intercontinental Hotel in Century City in March of 2016, the video released by CNN on Friday. At the time, addressing multiple allegations of sexual assault, Diddy wrote, quote, let me be absolutely clear, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. Wendy Blanc of Peace Over Violence says she hopes videos like these will change the tendency for people to blame the victim in domestic violence cases. When we see these videos, um, it is affirming um, the stories that are being shared. You know, it's affirming the abuse that is happening. Um, but I think um, to feel that like that's the only way that people will believe you can be disheartening. Hey, tea sippers, I hope everybody's doing good today. Time is straight up flying. But it is getting crazier and crazier with this whole Diddy situation. So if you guys do not know, um, Diddy's former bodyguard, his name is Roger Bonds. He was one of the ones named in the lawsuit with Cassie, where Cassie, you know, confirmed that Roger did try to help her. In many instances, he got in between her and Diddy. And so he decided to speak out yesterday concerning Diddy's apology. And so he took to social media and he said the following. I guess you sorry and was at rock bottom for years and years because you was whipping not only her ass, but Kim's ass, but others too. Let's reflect. Harlem to Hollywood coming soon. Basically, he has a book that he's been working on that he's going to, you know, release soon concerning his life and times, you know, with Diddy. And so this entire situation is interesting because now outside of Gene Deal and even Mark Curry, we also have Roger Bonds confirming that Diddy put hands on Kim. OK, um, so. Again, we've been talking about this for years on this channel, so it finally feels good that we're having more and more people speak out and validate these claims, that they're just not rumors, speculations, and innuendos. So later on that night, Roger Bonds went on to the Pierce Morgan show, so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys that interview right here. Go ahead and check this out. I've gotten in between things of this nature before, and this was back in 2012. So that's why I was so adamant on what I said yesterday after he posted that apology, because it comes a time where it's like you can't just say anything you want to say and think that people going to accept it. You know what I'm saying? I think I think it's a God syndrome, you know, the same way that he's been in a lot of trouble before and you could pay your way out. He knew those cameras was there, you know, but of course. As we heard, he came back to the hotel and he paid to get the footage, mm. but didn't know which Cassie said inside a complaint that they gave her a copy of the footage also. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when you go through life just paying your way out, I really feel like he wasn't sorry about that. Yeah, he might be sorry now. He's sorry that he got caught. But if that was a one-time incident, then I would say accept his apology. But I think... In that apology, he said what he thought people wanted to hear. How many times did you personally witness him be violent towards women? Uh, around four or five times. And was that all with Cassie or was it Cassie and other women? Uh, I seen him with Cassie and I seen him with Kim.
Porter, his uh, kid's mother. Right, who's now so sadly no longer with us. But what, what did you see him do? Uh, I've, I've seen him get physical. I've seen him get really physical, grab him up. It was one time that Cassie mentioned inside her lawsuit where she said she had to go over to the London Hotel. Mm. I was the one that was checking on her every day at the London Hotel. You know what I'm saying? So I know that to be true. I've seen him get into some rustling and punching matches. And sometimes I felt like, what are you mad at? What are you upset about? Because it's it's a deeper anger when you hitting and punching a woman in that type of manner. And it's okay. It's, it's, it's understood if you have a problem with one woman and you seek things, but when you have a problem with every woman that you're dealing with, then I think that problem is inside of you. What did you see him do with Kim Porter? I seen him inside the car, grab her up. I seen him smack her, you know? And one thing about Kim is Kim got to the point where she fought back because she realized how powerful she was. It was one incident on Sunset Boulevard in front of the Beverly Hills Hotel where I just seen the car rocking back and forth. You know, of course he put everybody out the car, but I seen the car shaking, so I opened the door. I said, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? You see where we at and what are you doing? And Kim got out the car like nothing happened and she fixed her hair and she told him, she said, I wanna see you explain to the media, that scratch I'm gonna put across your face if you put your hands on me again. Mm. And that, that was that was Kim attitude. Kim attitude was she realized that what he had to explain meant more to him than anything. And once she realized she had that power, she said, "Nah, not no more." Because you gonna have to explain why you all mocked. All right, so you guys just saw that interview. So the whole thing is very interesting. Now, on top of Roger speaking out and confirming what we know was allegedly happening, what we know that was allegedly happening to Kim, Misa, okay, Diddy's first baby mama, you know what I'm saying? Misa and Diddy, we're just going to say that Justin is Diddy's child, even though a lot of y'all think it's wolves, okay? But anyhow, Misa comes out. She's finally speaking on the situation as well. So I'm gonna read to you guys what Misa had to say. So Misa posted a picture of the three boys, Quincy, Justin, and Christian. Then she also posted a picture of the four girls, uh, Chance, the twins, and the Blasian baby, okay? And this is what she had to say. She says, I am heartbroken that Cassie must relive the horror of her abuse. My heart goes out to her. I know exactly how she feels. Through my empathy, it has triggered my own trauma. These young people were raised by a woman that wants the best for them. We put God in education first and have always been united in our mutual effort to support their dreams. Two of the youngest do not have their mother here. It has been our duty to support them. Their father needs help and I'm praying that he truly does the personal work and receives it. So that is what she had to say about the situation. As you guys remember, she had blasted Diddy um, in the summertime when Justin was out here acting bad and drunk driving and getting pulled over. And she says that the fish's head rots from the top and basically called out Diddy months ago. I could tell she was starting to find her voice because usually Misa's very protective of Diddy. And anytime you bring up the age difference and the grooming, she gets upset and she deflects. So I knew that there was definitely something going on behind the scenes with her and Diddy when she took to social media to blast him about their child. Now, what's very telling in this statement, she says here, I know exactly how she feels. Through my empathy, it has triggered my own trauma. That says a lot. What that says to me, that she's also high key, not low key, but high key confirming that Diddy also put hands and possibly feet on her as well. And we know that because there have been rumors of Diddy beating her so bad that she had to hide under a car. Um, and then let's not forget, she got with Diddy when she was really young. You know, he was in college. She was about 16, even though she wants to lie and say she was 20. But she wasn't. So I'm sure she probably got the worst of that brunt back then, being like the first baby mama and stuff like that. What's the story about Diddy putting his hands on his baby mom, Misa? Well, Misa was... You know, young, drop dead gorgeous. She was trying to make her way in the business, doing fashion. And she was a stylist. 
And I don't know the semantics of it, but Eric Sermon had, I think he dropped her off at one time. You know what I mean? He dropped her off, and I think either Puff heard about it or seen it. And whatever he was, yo, he put hands on her. He, she, you know what I mean? To the point where is that nobody was helping her. Now, this is a story that was told to me, bro, by somebody who was there. You know what I'm saying? And they said he put hands on her. Misa was running from him so hard trying to get away from him. She tried to crawl up under a car. And then we all remember he cheated on her for, you know, her friend, which is Kim Porter. And they ended up breaking up. So, you know, unfortunately, the kids are going to get drug into this. Now, the, the minor children, I feel bad for them because they have nothing to do with this. The older boys who are damn near 30, I feel no ways. Especially being that at least two of them, outside of Quincy, her own son, Justin, and Kim Porter's son, Christian, have been named in those lawsuits. So they need to stand up like men and fight their own battles because they're grown. But the girls are still minors. And the sick thing is that this man has four daughters. Imagine if somebody drug any one of his daughters up and down a hallway and put hands and feet on his daughters the way he did somebody else's daughter. That's the part that just blows my mind with a lot of these sick men is that they'll have the shotgun ready in the event somebody even thinks of disrespecting their, their daughters. But yet and still, they don't have that same logic when it comes to somebody else's daughter, somebody else's mother, somebody else's sister. You know, so it's really, really sickening. And sometimes the sins of the father can affect the children. So he better hope that the people around these twins and chants have raised them well enough where they don't end up in the same situation because it could be them getting their butts kicked five years from now because they've seen this pattern. Trust me, they all witnessed this abuse. They witnessed their mothers being abused, Cassie, Misa. They've witnessed it. They've heard it. So I wouldn't be shocked if these young girls internalize this and think that it's normal. That's how a man should treat you. That's how a man shows you love. Remember this big dick deviant was on The Breakfast Club basically saying that as a man with money and power, you don't have to give a woman more than 75%. They get 75% of the good side, but there's 25% that, they that they're that they forced to deal with if they want to be with a man of that status. And you have to put up with cheating. You have to put up with you know me being an asshole every now and then because I'm rich. This is what he was instilling in his minor son almost nine years ago when Christian was 16. You think his daughters didn't listen to that interview and internalize that and think that that's how a man with money and wealth is supposed to treat me? Because they're not going to be dating the local fry cook. They're going to be dating men in wealthy circles. And that's the message that he's putting out there for his son, but not understanding that his daughter, daughters will be digesting that same message. So nothing I can't deliver. Mm -hmm. What I can deliver, I, I've broken this down, what I can deliver out of a pie mm -hmm. is I can promise you that um, I'm in a relationship with you like 25% like of your time, you're going to just like feel like, oh man, I hate being here. <laughs> oh man, I hate this guy. Oh man. Oh man, he cheated on me. He lied on me. Ah, that's twenty five percent. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But then there's seventy five percent of I'm gonna make you the happiest woman in the whole wide world. I'm gonna be there to support your dreams. I'm gonna be there to hold you, listen to you. I'm gonna be there to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. And I promise you'll smile the most. You know who I am. This is what it is. Twenty five cent percent, seventy five percent. Which deal would you choose? Now, for most Damn. of you guys, don't try this at home. Don't try that at home. Because yeah, you gotta be this probably isn't going to work for you. To get that <laughs> no, 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 you have to be honest. <laughs> marriage is about honesty. Not try this at home. Marriage is about honesty. This is a different type of marriage. Let's go into a new time, a different type of marriage. <laughs> Married men in here don't get... You know, flustered. <laughs> Let's be honest. Damn, I'm bringing, I'm bringing twenty five percent of some bullshit. Okay. Now, can she tell you twenty five percent of the time you're gonna say the same thing to her and feel the same way, and but, the other yeah. seventy five percent of hey, the time you'll be happy? Yeah, but this, um, if she could promise me that seventy five percent of the time, I'll take that. Nah, nah, be, girl, be, be, because, 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 because what? And she could do the other twenty five. You can't cheat? let the girls cheat, did he? No. Nah, 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 nah. I didn't say. I, I, 
That was my list. Oh, that's your list. <laughs> and what's even crazier is around the time that he's talking about this whole percentage in relationships is also around the time he was kicking Cassie's ass in that video. How ironic that as long as you put it with the 25%, me putting hands on you, cheating on you, the rest, the 75% will be me spoiling you, taking you out, putting you on the red carpet. And unfortunately, some women are willing to put up with that for the lifestyle, but I'm here to tell you it's not worth it. It's not worth your mental health, your physical health. It's not worth your soul. We all have one life to live and people need to make decisions wisely. Don't waste your life being a punching bag for somebody. Don't waste your life being abused and misused for somebody else's ego and their self-esteem and their depravity. So now on top of Misa speaking out, I also want to hit on this whole situation with Cameron. Everybody has been sending me this video. This video is a trip. So Cameron was invited, okay, to speak to Abby Phillips on CNN. And a lot of people are really pissed by the way he acted on national television. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. When you saw that video of Diddy, Cassie uh, in that hotel, did you recognize that Sean Combs? Um, what I want to say, first of all, when I seen the video, um, everything in the video is egregious. I'm against, uh, I don't support. Uh, all the charges that's alleged against them. I don't support any of that traffic and minors, uh, domestic violence. I'm totally against it. So when I seen the video, yeah, I was kind of upset with it. Uh, no, being that I know him, he's not necessarily a friend, but yeah, I was upset when I seen it. But did, did you recognize everything him? I just said, did you recognize right? that I kind of anger at all from your experiences? I don't know him like that. What did you mean? Do I be recognized? Did I recognize him? I seen him. What do you mean my experiences? I seen them and I thought I thought it was disgusting. I didn't do a zoom in to see if it was really him or nothing, but he admitted it was him, so yeah, it was him. What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? Amy for this the apology ain't for me to decide it's for Cassie. What what I what I think about it don't matter. He ain't do nothing to me. Cassie need to need to ask Cassie if she accept the apology. I told you I feel. I said what I said. I want to play a conversation that you had on your podcast back in September with Mace. Mm -hmm. Listen. Yeah. When you had your mm, record that's... deal, why did you take me to Biggie Smalls and not um, Bad Boy? Man, it's almost going to bring me to tears to say this. I just, being that I saw you as, as such a good friend, I wanted to put you with somebody I knew with. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. A lot of people ask me that on Instagram, yeah, I knew man. Don't have instantly, me just out here crying and shit, it. man. I don't want to get emotional knew, in here, man. Instantly, I knew Biggie would, would do right by you. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, is there, um, is there something known in the industry about how Diddy treated his artists? So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, I'm just going off what Mace said. Mace took me to Biggie. I don't really know Puff is like Mace no Puff. So I appreciate what Mace said. And of course, uh, that's my brother. So if he felt that way, then he felt that way. I can't really tell you how Puff moves or anything like that. Mace may know better than me because he was signed to Puff. I wasn't. But my show does come on at 8 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. It's called It Is What It Is. And y'all make sure y'all check it out. I mean, I might get some more information out of Mace from there. But for me to tell you mm. how Puff acting and all that, I don't know. I never was signed to him. Yeah. What about the industry in general? I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do you think that's the case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that all invited me to. Yo, who, yo, who booked me for this joint? All right. Oh, wow. And I don't be Cameron. sitting around watching Diddy and all that. Yeah, thanks. Man, come on, man. This thanks for crazy, joining man. us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah, yo, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So you guys just heard what Cameron had to say. So a lot of people are mad about this and saying that he was extremely disrespectful to that black woman and that, you know, this is why abuse is happening in the community and things like that. Um, 
I felt like, first of all, who the fuck invited Cameron to come talk on CNN? I don't know how old Abby Phillips is, but I'm assuming she's around my age, if not older. Okay, I still remember Cameron and Dame Dash acting a fool on Bill O'Reilly. I remember Cameron going on 60 Minutes acting a fool, talking about, you know, he's not snitching even though he had been shot. Cameron has always acted a fool on the news networks. I don't know why people are acting so shocked by his behavior. That is how Cameron gets down. Let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory. You it's, hurt children. How do you hurt children by promoting to be an entrepreneur and a CEO right. and to do right? By, looking at a principal. For example, for example. Yeah, you yeah, you hold it. Hold it. Why you're looking at a principal. Why you don't want to let him talk? You mad. You mad. You mad. You mad. Where'd you get from? Where'd you start? Covering the fear, right? No, wrong. Well, you're you looking, you're looking I got at a man. On you, doggy. Cameron, get, <laughs> I'm gonna get at you in the you minute. You go ahead. Come to eye to eye. Rapper Cameron has made millions from his lyrics about life in the mean streets of Harlem. And a big part of his hip-hop culture is keeping your mouth shut when the cops come around. You were shot in both arms? Yes. And you have nerve damage in one of them? Yes. Does it still hurt? Oh yeah, it definitely feels like my hand is numb. It's in an ice box all day. If you had seen who shot you, mm -hmm. would you have told police? No. Why? Because the type of business I'm in, it would definitely hurt my business. And the way that I was raised, I just don't do that. I'm raised from where we wasn't raised to tell. You wasn't brought up to say, hey, this guy did that. This guy did that. It's kind of like not saying go do something bad to the person who did something to you, but it's kind of policing your own community. If there is a serial killer living next door to you, though, and you know that person is, you know, killing people, would you be a snitch if you called police and told them? If I knew the serial killer was living next door to me? Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call and tell anybody on them, but I'd probably move. Like, I'm not going to be around because... I don't need to be living around serial killers, but I'm not going to call and be like, put the signs up like, yo, you know, the serial killers in 4E. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. Now, I feel like this. She initially asked him how he felt about the video. He said everything in the video is egregious. I'm against it. Um, you know, he said he was upset. And then she kept poking and priding and trying to ask, you know, the same question, but in a different way. So finally, he just kind of went off. But again, I ask, why of all the rappers would you have Cameron on CNN? He's not a good interviewer. He's always, you know, clowning and acting a fool. And she should have expected that. I personally wouldn't have invited him. And then he's up here promoting his, you know, energy drink. I think it's, it's like liquid Viagra or something like that. And talking about smashing some cheeks. It's like, could you be any more ratchet and ghetto? But again, that's on CNN. I don't feel bad for them. They could have invited 50 Cent on there, who has been Diddy's nemesis for a while. They could have invited Mace on there, who actually worked with Diddy, who would have more of a story to tell than Cameron. So to me, the interview was silly. I don't feel bad for them. And my thing is, Diddy has been a problem. So why are y'all so invested now, mainstream media? For years, y'all covered for him. Y'all gave him honorary, you know, awards at Howard, at Howard University. Y'all gave him keys to New York City. So why is the mainstream media now all of a sudden invested in this case? Only because the domestic violence video leaked out. Y'all should have been invested in this case when other people have been speaking out against Diddy for years about his shady practices and his violence. So it's very interesting how they're all invested in the situation now. So I find it very interesting that the news is now all of a sudden reinvested in this story simply because of the Cassie video. So since this video has gotten viral, Cameron is speaking out. So the first thing he did, he had posted this on social media. So Cameron took to Instagram and he said, you mad? You mad, bro? So that's what he posted on his Instagram story. And then he also took to his podcast that he does with Mace. And this is what he had to say. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Oh, no, I seen your hand. Yeah, no, they invited me on the show to talk about uh, what's going on with Diddy and all that. And then my, my thing about it was Mace stat is that they didn't invite me on to say about how successful our show is or the positive stuff we do in the community, how every day, five days a week, Mace talks to kids on a Zoom call. Mace doesn't even promote this. I'm going to promote this for Mace. Is that every day at 5 o'clock, it don't matter what's going on, what's happening, um, where he's at. It, does, it could be money involved. It could be a photo shoot. It could be whatever. He stops what he's doing to talk to kids around the world about being positive and 
um, doing what they believe in and so on and so forth. And to the point where, you know, one day he was at my house and he told me, Cam, you can't make no noise. Don't come in. I'm not playing with you. Like, that's how serious. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's how serious he takes what he does. And we do all these positive things. And you call me on CNN for the bullshit, I'm going to give you the bullshit. That's, that's just what's going to happen. So we got some free promo. I, I teased the pink horsepower. Uh, they tried to bring up when Mace uh, bought me the biggie instead of Puff. And I said, yeah, if, if you've seen it, what you asking me about it for? Like, All right. So you guys just saw the response that he had um, to the interview on CNN on his podcast with Mace. So as you see, Cameron doesn't care. That's just how Killer Cam gets down. Again, anybody who's doing really serious journalistic work, who has journalistic integrity, out of all the people in hip hop, why would you reach out to Cameron? Cameron has been acting a fool during news interviews since I was a child. That had been the last person I would have asked to come onto CNN to speak about anything. He, he lives by the street code. No snitching, you know, see no evil, hear no evil. He's just not the right fit. So, I mean, a lot of people are upset and, you know, and mad and shocked. But for me, I'm not shocked. I'm not going to waste my energy being upset. When people show you who they are, believe them. So that was on CNN for being foolish and trying to fish for information from the wrong rapper. Why not get like a Mark Lamont Hill or somebody, you know what I'm saying, who really can speak to the situation, you know, Michael Eric Dyson. Why not interview somebody like that? Or hell, like I said, 50 Cent. He doesn't like Diddy, so interview 50. But it's going to be interesting, like I said, to see how all of this ends up playing out. But I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation. How do you guys feel about Misa coming out and speaking um, and, you know, saying some heartfelt words to Cassie and the children? How do y'all feel about what Cameron did on CNN? Do y'all feel like he was doing too much or that CNN should not be shocked at all by his behavior? And then last but not least, how do y'all feel about Roger Bonds and what he had to say about the Diddy and Cassie situation as well? Please make sure to like the video. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.